Yes, people, we are back, back with another video. Not a live stream today, just a video. Just a little update on what is happening in the Tottenham scene at the moment. Because let's be honest, there is never a dull moment in being a fan of this football club. I'm currently away on a holiday in Dubai. I'm just at my hotel room. It is around 10 to 1 um, local time, so it'll be around 10 to 9 UK time. That's AM. And I wanted to just give you a little update on what's happening, if you're not already aware, with the Tottenham Wrens game um, and the Brighton Tottenham game and what's exactly going on in the Tottenham camp. Because, like I said, there's never a dull moment. So let's just get straight into it. Before I do, make sure you do subscribe to the channel. We're pushing 4K subscribers. Only hit 3.5K the other day. Supporting the channel has been absolutely amazing. And make sure you do smash the like. The target is 75 likes on the video. I know you can do it. You guys absolutely obliterate it as all. Right. So let's jump in. So late last night, um, it was announced on Tottenham's Instagram and their Twitter account that um, Tottenham put a statement out saying the game was off due to a COVID break in a Tottenham camp. And they've taken advice from health secretaries agency to shut their training ground as well, which gives me and everyone else the assumption that the Brighton Tottenham game on the weekend will no longer go ahead as well. And that game will be postponed. Now, postponing the Premier League game is not the end of the world because you can fit it in. You know, it's a long period. You can fit it in when, when you can. If it's a Wednesday or a midweek game, we'll have to play them. However, if you postpone a competitive group stage game where there's so much riding on this group game that if we lose or draw and Vitesse beat Mura, we are no longer in the Conference League. And that puts our fans down. They're completely divided down the middle because... There's a certain section of our fan base that want to stay in the competition because we want to win a trophy. And there's a certain section of the fan base that wants to get knocked out so we can focus on top four because, you know, we've got Conte, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, if we're given the right money, we can win. I agree with both sides. However, the bit that's turning everyone's head and definitely turning my head is the fact that UEFA, according to various reporters like Alistair Gold, The Athletic, have said that the game is going ahead. Now, according to Antonio Conte's report, when he spoke to Sky Sports, he said it was a minimum of eight. Um, eight of our first team players have COVID-19. Then it was later announced that 11 players have COVID-19. Now, correct me, I could be wrong on this, but I was told um, by a reporter that if a first team goalkeeper gets COVID-19 and your, and your backup goalkeeper is carrying an injury, and the game cannot go ahead, obviously, because we don't have a, we don't have a goalkeeper. It's not like a centre back or a left back where you can you can chop and change. So that that, that car go past, whatever it is, Lamborghini or something. Um, if it's first team player, a left back or centre back, you, it's a lot easier to change because a goalkeeper is a more of a specialised specialised position. Now, another report shortly come out a few hours after that, saying the game has to go ahead before the twenty second of December. Because that's when the winter break is, right? Which is all well and good. Now, between now and the 22nd of December, we have got to play Brighton away, Premier League game on the 12th. Leicester away, Premier League game on the 16th. Liverpool at home, Premier League game on the 19th. West Ham at home in the EFL Cup quarterfinal on the 22nd. Crystal Palace at home in the Premier League on the 26th. And Southampton away on the 28th. That is all in a very short period of time. Those games are between three and four days apart each game. That's one, two, three, four, five, six games we have to play between the 9th and the 28th. So we have got to play six games in 19 days. That's excluding the game. If it goes ahead tonight, no one knows what's going on. The only My assumption is if we forfeit the game tonight, we take a 3-0 loss, which I don't think the club will want to do because then we crash out of the Conference League, right? If we postpone the game, it has to go ahead before the 22nd. So we've got Brighton, Leicester, Liverpool and West Ham. So we've got four games we'd have to play in 13 days, which averages out one game every two to three days, which isn't impossible, but it, squad rotation has to be key. Now, in my personal opinion... This Conference League game is more important than the Brighton game and more important than the Leicester game because we need a trophy. 
We are starving for success. We are nearly 13 years without a trophy. You know, it's a very, very, very long time without a trophy. Now, if we get top four, it'd be fantastic because we could give Conte a massive amount of budget and he can build the team. Because this is all Nuno's team, all Mourinho's team, and the bulk of it is still Pochettino's team. Now, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. In my personal opinion, I don't think the game will go ahead. I think the game will be rescheduled next Tuesday. Tuesday slash Wednesday. And the game against Thursday will get postponed. I don't think the Brighton game will go ahead either. Because if a, if 60 to 70% of our squad has got COVID, the rules are you have to isolate. Now... These players get tested every single day, part of their job. Their job is a professional footballer, a professional athlete. They are getting tested in the morning and straight after a game. Now, I don't know what's going to happen. No one knows. My, my estimate is the game against Brighton will be postponed and the game against Wren tonight will be postponed and that will be played next week. Now, the other issue is if the game does go ahead tonight, we have only got two or three first 11 players. Now, those players have not been announced. The only, there's a rumour that went around, I'm just sure, rumour that went around that it was Mura, so it was Mura, Lucas Mura, Son, Brian Hill, and two other players that were the initial players that got COVID. But now we're talking, if we're talking eight to 12 players, how on earth can we possibly play this game against Renz? Now, Renz also put out on their club website, and they've also made their voices heard, that they are fuming that this situation is not going ahead. Now, if the shoe was on the other foot, if Renz had 8 to 12 COVID incidences, Tottenham wouldn't be going, oh, yeah, you've got to play, you've got to play. There's more things important than football. If a player has got COVID-19, which kills and has killed millions of people, we've got to take that seriously. It's more important than football. If we're getting advice from the health secretary agency, it's more important. It's going to be very, very, very interesting to see what happens. I'm just trying to get some more news for you um, as I speak. Um, da, 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 da. there's nothing currently um currently coming out of the uh, of the club. Um, the last thing was from Demazio last night. So there are 20 cases of COVID-19 found by Tottenham among players of the first team under 23s club and staff. So that could mean that could be X amount from first team under 23s. You know, players, coaches, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But we are going to keep this video um very about eight nine minutes long. Make sure you do smash the like. Um, if the video, if the game goes ahead tonight, obviously my post-match reaction will be on the channel. So make sure you put your notification bell on. Make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you smash the like video. And then we can go. But it's going to be very interesting to see what happens in the next 12 hours or so with this football club. Because if Wafer are saying one thing and Tottenham are saying another thing, you know, a Wafer have the power to say, look, okay, if you can't play, you forfeit. And if we forfeit and Vitesse go and beat Mura, we are out of the Conference League. If Mura beat Vitesse 2-0, we stay in the Conference League even if we forfeit. So, at the moment, it's out of our hands. It's in a way for hands. If they want the game to go ahead, then we have to abide by their rules. But if Tottenham are saying, listen, the game's not going ahead because we can't play players, and, we, and then they're getting evidence, they're getting the health secretary agency involved, then it is what it is. But make sure you do smash the like on the way out. Make sure you are subscribed. Like I said, if the Rens game goes ahead tonight, I will have my post-match reaction um, straight afterwards. So make sure you are subscribed and I will see you all very, very soon. Come on, you Spurs.